We are going to be looking at types of court cases and due process of law, but first we need to take a look at the two different types of court cases that can exist. When dealing with court cases, you're going to either be facing civil law or criminal law. Well, civil law or civil court cases, they deal with disputes between individuals when no law has been broken. Action or wanting to go to court is taken by the aggravated party and they are known as a claimant or a plaintiff. They accuse someone of doing them wrong even though it doesn't break the law and that would be the defendant. Now in a criminal court case or criminal law, this is a court case concerned with wrongs committed against an individual but also seen as harmful to society as a whole, which is why they had broken a law. Action is taken against the wrongdoer in the name of society. Now the person that is accusing someone of doing wrong is the prosecutor and the person that is being accused of wrongdoing is a defendant. Please approach the bench and I apologize for apologizing I shall remind fence I told her no lie my phone died. There are differences in civil and criminal proceedings. Civil cases after the suit is filed there is a trial and the jury can make a verdict. If the plaintiff or defendant does not like the ruling, they can always then appeal. In criminal proceedings and criminal cases, there is a different approach. Once an arrest has been made and an initial hearing is had on what the person is being accused of, there's a trial. Upon trial, if found guilty, they're sentencing, and if the defendant, the person being accused, does not feel that the sentencing or the verdict was fair, they can always appeal. So we're going to take a look at that due process procedure, starting with different types of criminal charges. Less serious crimes such as traffic violation or disorderly conduct that do not result in prison time, these are known as misdemeanors. Felonies are serious crimes such as kidnapping or homicide that would result in prison time. Honey came in and she got me red -handed. Regardless of severity, each court case is given the right to due process of law. Due process is the duty of the government to follow fair procedures set by law when carrying out government functions. The Constitution specifically states that we need to have due process in the United States. The Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment both speak specifically on this topic. The Fifth Amendment says no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And very similarly, the Fourteenth Amendment also makes mention that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So the Constitution even says due process is necessary. But why is it necessary, and what exactly does it look like? Most would say due process is a necessary thing in the United States government in order to limit the government's policing power or its authority to enforce laws to protect the public. The due process procedures that we're going to go over next ensure that everyone gets a fair trial or a fair navigation of the judicial system. It's not fair! The rights of the accused are very important in the United States and due process ensures that anyone who is accused of something is treated fairly. Starting with the arrest. In order to even be arrested, police must have probable cause. If police do not witness the crime, they must have an arrest warrant. Anyone accused of a crime must have a preliminary hearing within 10 days of their arrest. This preliminary hearing determines if there's enough evidence against the accused person to actually have a trial. The hearing is also held for the judge to set a bail if that's necessary. In the indictment phase, the accused goes before a grand jury. The grand jury determines if there's enough evidence for the case to go to trial. The grand jury's right was established under the Fifth Amendment. If the grand jury should determine that there's enough evidence, it issues an indictment. From here, the accused will go to trial. After an indictment has been given, an arraignment will happen, where the accused is allowed to enter a plea. 
The accused appears before a judge and enters a plea of guilty or not guilty. And the accused may choose to make a plea bargain with the prosecutor before appearing before the judge in order to receive a lesser charge or sentence. Oftentimes, plea bargains are made. After a plea of not guilty is entered, the accused would then go to a bench trial or a jury trial. A bench trial is when it's a trial without a jury and the judge hears the evidence and makes a decision. A jury trial is where a member of peers come in, hear the evidence, and make their decision. After evidence is closed and both sides have rested their cases, the verdict will be given by the jury and the verdict will either be guilty or not guilty. The accused then has another hearing set so the judge can issue a sentence or a punishment. If a guilty verdict was reached, then sentencing would occur. The judge decides the punishment or the sentence if the defendant is found guilty by the jury. Some sentences are mandatory and the judge cannot change them. Mandatory sentence services are required in some states because some people feel that criminals are not serving long enough sentences.